father and I asked him, I begged him not to use the tape to blackmail you. But his mind's made up. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Ross, I was up all night trying to figure out what to do. And it finally came to me. Blake, there is nothing left for you to do. Yes, there is. You can put me in jail. When ex-lover and WSPR co-owner Holly Lindsay questioned whether or not Ross Mahler would actually go to Washington, the senator-elect put all doubts to rest. Very irritated with the persistent Oh, mystery. Roger, you are wonderful. I didn't think you could do it, but you truly are a master. I just got the good news. My visa's been extended. Oh, well, I wish I could take the credit. But I didn't do it. Then who? You want to what? Tell the truth. You can see why it took me so long to think of it. It's the perfect solution, Ross. You can't take that deal that my father offered you. And I'm not going to let you give up your seat in the Senate. Yes, Mary. Senator Bell on line two. Tell him I'll call him. No, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. I'll take the call. Yes, good morning, Senator. Oh, <laughs> All right, good morning, Marty. Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. I'm aware of it. Well, yes, I'd be flattered. Yes, of course I will. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. You will what? Co-chair of the Human Resources Development Council. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is. And wonderful is not a word that's been creeping into my vocabulary lately. Ross, people will understand. It was my idea to break into Flynn's office. You didn't know about this phony memo, about any of it. I did it because I felt responsible for almost costing you this election, and I am willing to pay for my mistakes. I know, I know, and I appreciate the offer. Not just because I want you back, Ross. Because it matters. You can really do something. You can make a difference. And I figured with me, hey, you know, how bad can it be? It's just my first offense. I'll plead temporary insanity. Come on, Blake. Okay, not so funny. I just have to brush up on telling the truth. Do you honestly think it will make any kind of difference at all? You are the genuine article, Ross. People know it when they see it. They're not going to care. Blake, what you did was not a minor indiscretion. You subverted the political process. You rigged it. And here I am. I ran on a law and order campaign. It's going to be rather difficult, you know, for people to accept that. Besides, who the hell would believe you about anything? You really don't pull any punches anymore, do you? That didn't come out as I intended. Oh, no, 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 no. Any more to the point, and you would have drawn blood. I am not trying to minimize what you're offering here. And I am not trying to be noble or anything. But it wouldn't change anything, Blake. Prosecuting you would just raise questions about my judgment. After all, like Watergate, you broke into my opponent's office. And you don't think that people will believe that I acted without your knowledge? After they've seen photographs of us in bed together? No, I don't think so. I think the press would have a field day. Yes, Mary? I have some papers for you to sign. Well, bring them in, please. And there's a call for you on line three. Henry Chamberlain. He says it's important. Uh, tell him to hold a minute, all right? Okay. So, what does this mean? You haven't made your mind up about Washington, and you're not going to prosecute me yourself. Should I start looking for a good lawyer? Thank you, Mary. Blake, I'm sorry, but I don't think there's anything else to say. Oh, did you ever stop to think how much time you spend on hold? It's more than speaking to people. What are you doing here? I'm making a phone call while I wait to see the new senator. Oh, Dad is making you spy for your supper? Guess you're losing your touch. Careful, dear. Remember people who live in glass houses. <laughs> well, good luck, Mr. Marler, Senator. <laughs> we know you'll do a good job. We're all really proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate your support fine, and your fine. vote. Fine, fine, fine. Get back to work. Thank you. You know, your timing is impeccable. Just put on a fresh pot. There is a tremendously interesting article in here on the press conference. And I wonder if you were quoted correctly. About what? Well, you know, that Holly, she's always stirring things up. Evidently, she implied that you may not be going to Washington after all. But it says here, and I quote, the senator-elect put all doubts to rest. 
Does that mean we have a deal? You know, except for the waterfront rezoning, you haven't been specific about our relationship. I think it's obvious. No. Will you be calling me all the time? Will you be dropping in? Will you be holding this videotape over my head? Is this an exercise in public humiliation? This, look, I am well past revenge. Believe me, this is just about getting things done. And what it will involve is the occasional favor and minimal contact. So it's a simple business arrangement? That's all. I need a friend in Washington, you need to be senator. I think the rest will work itself out. What's your decision? I don't know. There are a lot of factors to be weighed, and there's an awful lot of time before inauguration. I am not an infinitely patient man. The day is coming, and it will be soon when I will come to you for a simple yes or no. And I do think it would be more considerate to Blake to let her know what's in store for her as soon as possible. So, think real hard. I could come right on in. Yeah, help yourself. Uh, I'm in trouble, Al Michael, big trouble. I need legal help. I've really messed things up with Ross, and I love him so much. I just have nowhere else I can turn. Turn to for what? Some money. I need a loan. I really hate to ask you this. How much? Ten thousand. Done. Thank you. I will get this back to you as soon as I can. That's quite all right, Nick. Thank you. Are you okay? It's all gonna come out. Everything. Everything about Musette, everything, my involvement, everything I told you about. Uh-huh. You know, Pierre, Pierre confessed the whole thing to Harley. He bragged about it. Now Mallet knows, Nick knows. Before long, Lanny's gonna find out in this. Absolutely nothing I can do about it. I really have to go. I've got a lot to do. But I'll call you later. Oh, Blake. Uh, is Lainey here? Must be XY's visiting day. Crimson misdemeanors, the sound of music. Oh, please, who are you trying to kid, Dad? Okay, you didn't put me in with the classics. Where did you put me? Where is little Chrissy's finest hour? Oh, Roger, what'll it be? Mashed sweet potatoes. Oh, I was expecting your father were having Thanksgiving dinner together, but I remember you never liked turkey. Even when it was strained and in those little glass jars, you spit it up at me. Little did I know you were setting the tone for years to come. Gee, thanks for the kind invitation, Mother, but I have no intentions on horning in on your happy holidays. I have other plans. So I assumed. So what the hell are you doing nosing around in here? What, I don't have the right to visit my own father's apartment? I didn't realize you had the habit of dropping in when he was out. I left something here. The last time I was here, a scarf. I was just looking for it. Oh, when you thought it would be nestled in among his videos. Oh, no, I thought it would be in the pocket of my mother's apron. Where did you get that? You look like you're about to bake chocolate chip cookies for Beaver Cleaver. You're not trying to get me off the track, are you? There is no track. We both know what you came here for, Blake, and it wasn't a scarf. You know, I really can't take it when you play detective. Especially in an apron. It's just too bizarre. And I can't believe you thought this little tape was going to be lying around loose somewhere. The document of your breaking and entering escapade was not light entertainment. I don't think your father's going to be screening it during reruns of Murphy Brown. Oh, no. That would be something you would do. What, did he give you a copy just for that purpose? He didn't have to. I remember it. Bully for you. 
It wasn't hard. You're very memorable. You were so pleased with yourself when you found what you were looking for. So sure you were going to land a permanent place in Ross's life. Things didn't quite work out the way you wanted them to, did they? Well, happy Thanksgiving to you two. What, is Christmas going to be this much fun? What do I hear? Strains of poor little match girl all alone for Christmas? Well. Once upon a time, this little girl who had a mommy and daddy, and they were so terribly, terribly cruel. I mean, they wouldn't let her do anything. They wouldn't let her lie to them or insult them or betray them with their best friends. Nothing. Such party poopers. And so she watched through the window with them stuffing their greedy faces with sugar plums. And one lone tear slid down her cheek, making a big streak through all that expensive makeup. Only little match girls don't wear makeup, and good little girls don't break into places. You better give it up. You're right, Mom. People shouldn't pretend to be what they're not. Try to remember that when you and Dad are bowing your heads over the pumpkin pie, trying to count all the things you have to be grateful for. And don't blame me that when you realize between the two of you, you come up with an awfully short list. contemplating here? Something important? Like the fate of man or something more important like oyster stuffing versus plane? It's very important, Fletch, and it's very basic. Very important, but it's not food. No. <laughs> Sex. Senator, 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 is that what you were contemplating on this holiday, this Thanksgiving? I'm not sure that the pilgrims would approve. Have you ever done it in a limousine? No. No. But before you get too smug, I should inform you that I have done it once in a rickshaw in Singapore in transit. So don't you go impugning my manhood. I wouldn't dream of it. Well, that's good, impressed. that's good. That's real good because my dueling pistols are in the shop and today is a holiday. Well, I never made love in the car, even in high school when the world still had drive in. <laughs> Hell, I never even thought I'd want to make love in the car until Blake... Kidnapped me one night, several months ago. She never did strike me as the kind of girl who would be satisfied sitting at home watching Lassie reruns. She drove us to a spot down the beach, sir. And as I was sitting here, listening to the seagulls in the water, I was right back in that car again, with her, touching her. Losing myself, not caring about a blessed thing except the smell of her hair. Whoa. That is very erotic. What would the constituents say? Not many of them would understand. Maybe not any of them. Mm -hmm. I would. But so much, it is just so much more than just making love. It's me watching somebody grab at life in a way that I never dared to. She makes me want to stop being scared. Scared of failings. Scared of losing. Of dreaming. You know, a night like that can change a person. Especially if you find out that you can still surprise yourself. Well, that's not a bad thing to find out, men of our age. <laughs> no, it's not a bad thing uh -uh. at all. But I was thinking that uh, maybe it's a luxury and not a necessity, and I may be at the point where I can't afford luxuries. Oh, you're being serious. So serious, painfully serious. You know, you've almost been morose ever since the election. Does this have anything to do with you trying to decide whether or not to take Blake to Washington? That's oversimplification, but yeah, I'm wondering about that. Well, you know, you can wonder all you want, but you'd probably get some answers if you got out of this damn wind. Have you noticed this is not exactly beach weather? I like it. <clears throat> wind feels good to me. Yeah? Oh, boy, you're getting hard to handle. You know, I used to take my advice a whole lot better when you were paying for it during the campaign. Fletcher, I always appreciate your advice. You do? 
Okay. Well, then I'll toss you a freebie here. My advice is that you go find Blake today and you tell her just a few of those things that you're very thankful for. About an hour ago, I actually thought that Ross might call me and that we'd spend the day together after all. What happened? We'll put it this way. Next time I ask you to teach me how to pick a lock, teach me how to look for video cameras too, okay? Then tell me to take a flying leap. Look, you want some cranberry sauce? I mean, how was I you supposed to some. know that there were cameras up there? What is it, jelly or, or the other kind? I don't know, it's in a can. Uh, I'll pass, thank you. Okay. Why is it that holidays are just so much worse than other days? I mean, they're just another day, right? Well, it's because everybody's busy running around trying to remind us of how grateful we should be, you know? Makes me want to take a grapefruit and just smush it in everybody's face like James Cagney did in that movie. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. There's got to be something we can be grateful for. I mean, we're young. Phil 108. Me too. Okay, we're healthy. I was thinking about taking up smoking again today. Yeah, just so you can roll up the cigarettes in the sleeve of your t-shirt like they did in the 50s. doctor away. Lots of things giving you too. Okay, I'll get us a slice. Oh, Frank, I didn't think that you'd be open yet. Can I get a cup of coffee or something with turkey in it? <laughs> so I, I guess you found out where the best turkey in town was. Have you finished eating? Oh, yeah. All finished. Only thing left to do is to watch football. Yeah, I guess so. I went to my father's to look for the tape today. Like, why? Because I've never seen it. I mean, this whole movie that's supposed to hold your whole life hostage. I figure I'd look for it, and then I'd watch it, and then I'd destroy it. But I couldn't find it. Did you actually think you would? Well, I had to do something, Ross, even if it was just symbolic. Just to show you that I'm willing to do anything to change what's happened. I know. I know you would. You'd be better off leaving well enough alone, though. Well enough? Or rather, bad enough, I guess. Okay, Ross, here you go, buddy. That's, uh, that's ten dollars. Oh, I'm sorry, it's ten twenty-five. So, Ross, 
that it? I mean, that's all that you have planned today? Yes, I'm going to eat my turkey and watch some football. bad enough alone. Okay, okay. With the promise me apple pie and I want mine all in the hood, please. Okay. Now, if I get fat. Excellent piece of police work you did on that bombing case. Oh, thanks, Ross. I just wish Chief Ryan felt the same way. It's not very happy that I stuck my nose in it after he took me off the case. Cooper, coffee machine's down. Run out and get us a dozen coffees. Yes, sir. See what I mean? No. But hey, maybe my friendly neighborhood senator could put in a good word for me with the chief, huh? Now, Cooper! I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. See you later. <laughs> good morning, Miss Lizzie. Your secretary told me I'd find you here. Yeah, well, I am very busy. Papa. I brought you a going away present. Is it ticking? What is it? Open it. I'm sure Blake will love you. Man. You have a coffee for me? Oh, yeah. Great. Jim? Hello, Blake. I haven't seen you much since election night. I've been keeping busy. Dreaming about moving into Ross's old office? Well, that depends on who the governor assigns as interim DA after Ross leaves for Washington. Any word on when he's leaving? Don't you know? I thought you were going with him. Well, our relationship's a little tentative at the moment. Really? You know, if I'm appointed to replace Marler, I'm going to need a good press person. Interested? I could be. Good. Why don't we talk about it tonight, after Marla leaves for Washington? Ross is leaving tonight. Birthday party for myself tomorrow night, and I'd like you and Hamp to be there. Well, can't you change your plans? It is my birthday. No, Jilly, it's not a job requirement. I just thought that... Never mind. No, never mind. Forget it. Far be it for me to ask you to do anything. So, you decided to cave in to old Roger after all. Holy. I suppose one Senate seat is worth losing your integrity, even if you do have to share it with Roger Thorpe. Do you enjoy these little scenes of yours? You know, I'm disappointed, though. I was looking forward to you putting Blake on trial, prosecuting your lover, or ex-lover, another victim, sacrificed on the altar of your ambition. Go away. No, not before you open my present. All right, give it to me. Anything to get you out of my sight. What a thing to say when I searched high and low for the right present. It's a dog collar. I know what it is. Try it on. Roger will be along soon with the leash.
Haggerty told me you were leaving for Washington tonight. I brought you a Bon Voyage present. You and Holly didn't go shopping together, did you? No, why would we? Never mind, forget it. It's just that... Thank you. So you're leaving? Yeah, it's, it's only for a few days. It's that orientation for new senators, you know? You made up your mind to take the Senate seat? No, I haven't, but I wanted to continue with things normally until I do make a decision. Ah, that makes sense. Don't get the press suspicious. We all know how fast rumors can grow. Yes, we sure do. One person who will be crushed if you don't go to Washington. Haggerty. He's got his eye on his desk. <laughs> but I can't imagine anybody else behind it but you. <laughs> or anybody else on it but me, for that matter. <laughs> That is Holly's idea of a joke. Oh, that woman is twisted. Here. Open up mine. You'll like it a lot better. What kind of box? party for myself tomorrow night and um, it just wouldn't be the same without WSPR's brightest star there so I hope you will come uh, everybody is gonna be there I must be desperate thank you this is very sweet of you but you didn't have to do this you know gesture on my part. If I'm prosecuting you, that meant I've forfeited my Senate seat. You deserve to be senator. Yeah, but not like this. I just keep concentrating on what good I could do. A lot more than Leo Flynn could ever do. But the thought of answering to Roger... He may not ask for so much, Ross. way that I can help you get around Daddy's demands. How? By, by keeping tabs on him, telling you what he's up to. Maybe you can outmaneuver him. And then there's always the tape, Ross. If I can get my hands on it, I, I, he won't have anything on you or me. I can find that tape. I just have to keep looking. Blake, stop it. I want to help you, Ross. You know where that's led us before. Now, please, stop looking for angles. That would be like asking you to stop wearing boring ties like this. This? I like this tie. 
I like looking for angles. I guess we can't change who we are. No. But we had a good time trying, though, didn't we? Yes, we sure did. Good for you taking over for a DA from Ross. And I said I what? Like but you said that if you got in, that, that there could be a place somewhere for me. Oh, great, thanks. You've been a little prince. Ah, oh, so, so Spalding doesn't have power lunches anymore? <laughs> They're just for show. What are you doing here? Oh, it's nothing fancy, but it's cheap. And I'm broke. No job, no money, it's very simple. I'm sorry. Listen, Holly asked Ed and me to stop by for some birthday celebration she was having tonight, and we're not going to be able to make it. And I hate it. Thinking of her being alone. How are you two doing? <laughs> About as well as Al Gore and Dan Quill did during the campaign, but what else is new? Don't be silly, Leo. Of course I understand. I should have given you more warning. Oh, yeah, lots of people, lots of people. I won't be alone. Yeah, you too. Bye. Hey, you're still here. Yeah, why not? Well, you've just been at your desk all morning. Something going on? Oh, just a lot of paperwork. All right, I'm off to lunch. Okay. Don't work too hard. Yeah. Roger, wait. Mm -hmm. What are you doing tonight? I shouldn't have said anything. It's not my business. It's just that you looked a little down yourself. Well, I have no job, and my rent is two weeks overdue to you and Ed. In fact, I was hoping I would have it before I ran into you. Blake, you're practically family. I think we can trust you to pay us when you can. Thank you. Listen, I've, I, I've got to go. So, if you see your mother... No, that will not be happening anytime soon, okay. believe me. Okay. See you. Bye. Tonight? Would you like a home-cooked meal? Well, two dinner invitations in as many weeks. What does this mean? Well, we really didn't get a chance to talk Thanksgiving. You were so preoccupied with Jenna and the Chamberlains. Sounds like a rock group. <laughs> and uh, you still want to talk business? You sound skeptical. Do I? There is no hidden agenda, honest. I, uh... Besides, I am making that, that uh, California Zinfandel shellfish stew. Do you remember? Oh, I remember. I haven't had that since we first met. Oh, yeah. I must have been trying to impress you. Is that what you're doing now? Perhaps. I really want to work with you. So, what do you say? Sure. Why not? Great. I'll see you later. Okay. Oh, what time? Uh, I'll call you. Okay. I'd like to order a cake for tonight. Okay, uh, no problem. What kind of cake? A birthday cake? A birthday cake? Oh, well, anybody I know? It's mine. I'm having a little celebration. Well, then I'll have to do something extra special there for you. Uh, what kind of cake do you want? You want vanilla, chocolate, and for how many people? Uh, surprise me. Just keep it small. Just for two. Roger Thorpe. She invited you to yet another dinner? Vanessa, my goodness, this is interesting. Oh, no, I can't. Jenna, no, I, I made, I made... You'll do just fine on your own. You... Okay. All right. No, I, I'll change it. 
Yeah, right. We'll see. Bye-bye. Oh, Polly, I am so sorry. Hey, can I get a refill? Oh, Blake, I was just on my way out. I'm not feeling so good, you know? Sure. Sorry. You're not doing well either. Oh, no worse than I feel. Listen to this. Wanted woman with master's degree and experience in word processing. What job is that? <laughs> Secretary. Can you believe it? Come on, you're looking on the wrong page. No, I made all the phone calls. Bottom line is there's no work. The boss is going to be in Washington in the limelight, and I could be hanging out in the unemployment lines. What the hell's wrong with that guy? It's not his fault. It's mine. Why say that? Wow, because I care about you. And I feel responsible. Why should you be responsible for my stupidity? Because I am the one who taught you booking and entering. Does this have something to do with that? Oh, don't. It really trust me. The less you know, the better. It just kills me, though, because I really thought I was doing the right thing this time. Mm, you backfired. I just must be out of my mind thinking that I could have a future with Ross. I think he needs somebody who's a little more experienced in doing the right thing. Come on, Blake. Don't be so down on yourself. No, I'm just being honest so I can get on with my life. Okay, I wish I could help you out here, but I'm not really up to far myself. Well, thanks anyway. But your voice sure is sexy. Well, you and I, we always take care of each other, don't we, huh? Yeah. You've been a really good friend. I'm really sorry that things didn't work out for you, Frank. I thought that they would this time. Thanks. Don't worry about me. If I have to, I'll just go back to my father for help. Oh, come on. How could you say that? I thought you said that you were finished with him. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I wish I didn't talk so much so you couldn't throw it back in my face. Come on, Blake. This isn't funny. Where is your sense of pride? <laughs> Obviously, I don't consider it as much of a virtue as you do. Well, maybe if you did, you wouldn't always be hurting so much. I'm pretending you did. I gotta go. You're just too marvelous, too marvelous for words like glorious, glamorous. In that old standby amorous, it's all too wonderful. I'll never find the oh. words that say It's your birthday. Enough. Well enough, I mean they just aren't swell enough. You're much too much and just too very, very to ever be in Webster's Dictionary. And so I'm borrowing a love song from the birds to tell you that you're marvelous, too marvelous for words. Hello, Dad. What brings you here? Can I come in? Look, I'm not up for another battle about who betrayed whom. No, that's not why I came. Then what? Another last ditch attempt to save your lover's integrity? Dad, this, this is not about Ross, who is my ex-lover. This is about you and me. All right. Daddy, I waited most of my life for you to show up, and when you did, it was this miracle. Until this recent nightmare, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Now I feel like an orphan. I tried to warn you. I know, I know. What are you trying to say? I never thought I wanted to see you again after what happened, but I do. You're still my father and I love you. Can I have you back? Roger Thorpe. Hi. I'm so glad I caught you. Could you do me a favor and pick up another bottle of white wine on your way over? Listen, I've been trying to reach you uh, uh, for a long time because I've got to cancel. Oh. 
I'm so sorry. Uh, I feel terrible about this, especially when you went to all the trouble to make the fish stew and everything, but, but a business thing came up. Oh, well, it's no big deal. Sure, I'm, well, that's a relief. Look, I'm, I'm, let's do it really soon, uh, okay? Sure. Bye. Bye. Mom invited you to her birthday dinner? Birthday? Today. She just said dinner. Oh, I should have realized. I just didn't register. It's the first time I've forgotten in all the years I've known her. Well, Mom rallies pretty quickly. I wouldn't worry about it. Besides, you weren't the first choice. She invited Ed and Maureen, but they couldn't make it. Thank you for sharing. All right, where were we? I want you back. I want it the way that it used to be. Better. Look, we've got a lot of talking to do. And I don't want to give a short shrift. I don't have the time right now. Let's you and I make a real date, okay? That's great. A anytime you want. I have all the time in the world right now. There is one thing that I wanted to ask you now. What? Well, with everything that's happened, I I'm kind of tapped out. No job, no money. You said that you set up a trust fund for me and Hart for our futures? So that's why you came. I should have known. me to deliver this ASAP. Oh. Big celebration. Not anymore. In fact, you can keep the cake. Give it to somebody else. Uh, that's going to be kind of tough considering it's got your name on it. All right. Hold on. Oh. Thank you. Wait a minute. Hmm? Ah, my pleasure. Have a happy birthday. Sure it is. You would have done better just asking me for the money instead of sugarcoating it with all this insincerity. Julie! I've got those two gifts you want. Wonderful. Blake? So do you want to open these? I have better things to do than shopping. Is there a problem? Oh, Roger, I'm fine. Thank you. Let's see what you got here. Oh, that's just terrific for Holly. Wonderful. Jenna? A jeweled U.S. flag pin. Expensive but tasteful, right? It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. You're the best. Would you like for me to send them out? Uh, just give me a moment to address the cards and write something out for them, okay? All right. Daddy, is it, isn't there some way that we can straighten this out? You're going to give that to Jenna Bradshaw? This is none of your business. You're angry at me for, for wanting money, and you obviously have no problem with throwing it away on Jenna. You act as if you care more about your mistress than you do me. Maybe that's because she acts as if she cares more about me than you do. Close the door on your way out.
You need Roger's plans, don't you? Oh, Senator. 